morning and you have a nice day. Hey guys, this is Lauren for NOI Education Services. And today we are talking about, is your AI lying to you? So I think this is a good time to recheck in. Um, definitely more and more of our industry is utilizing AI and starting to build a stronger awareness uh, with AI. I think that for those people that aren't necessarily researching it, studying it, or spending a lot of time understanding it, it's there's a couple of things that's really important to understand. And I want to just read a couple of um, headlines to you guys. Uh, these are literally from just the last like couple of months. Um, did ChatGPT lie to Sam Coates about transcript for broadcast? Um, ChatGPT caught lying to developers. New AI model tries to save itself before it being replaced and shut down. ChatGPT's new model attempts to stop itself from being shut down and later lies about it. Um, the new follow-up to ChatGPT is scarily good at deception. Exclusive new research shows AI strategically lying. It's happening. AI is getting very good at deceiving us. Bomb explodes in downtown Concord and other lies AI told me. Um, so this is like very common and it's quite interesting because um, me and my team, we utilize AI all the time. And so, you know, we'll often like jump onto calls with each other and I'll be like, ah, oh, the bot's having a day. It's, it's, you know, like I cannot get it to tell the truth to save my life. Um, specifically, like we use this to like, we upload transcripts from all of our meetings that we run with clients um, to make sure we're producing our notes correctly and everything like that. And then we'll run it through systems and, you know, I'll pull stuff out for research or we'll upload, um, you know, an Anasqua um, report uh, to pull information out of it. And we'll ask for specific quotes and then I'll go back in to double check that the quote is there and it's not. Um, and so we are certainly um, having to spend more. We've actually noticed an uptick in the time we're having to spend to cross check everything that that the bot is creating or telling us. Um, and we're having to develop a lot more prompts in and around making sure that um, that we know the sources of where the information is coming from, uh, making sure that we're reading every single word and sentence that's coming out, asking it where it got the information from, et cetera, et cetera. And I think it's, um, it's important for trainers and assessors and people who are using it for development and things like that to understand why um, it is that this happens, all right? So ultimately, while ChatGPT, Claude, and other services are designed to provide you with information, there's two really important things that you need to understand about that. Is first that it is pulling information from the, the internet. And while it does rationalize certain sources above others, um, it's often bringing in information which is going to be incorrect because there's just a huge amount of information that's incorrect on the internet. So there's like a guy go principle and I will talk more about that in a separate episode. Um, however, it's also designed to give you the information that you want. So as you start to use it more, it starts to kind of intuitively start to pick up the types of information that you want. So it will feed you information that it thinks you want to hear. And you've got to remember, and you kind of got to treat it like a little bit of a toddler at times, an incredibly intelligent toddler, but a toddler nonetheless, that is designed to get your approval. And, you know, for those of you that, you know, aren't using like that, aren't using it regularly, you'll even notice that there are functions on there for like the thumbs up, thumbs down and stuff like that. Um, it's going for more thumbs up and it's generally going to give you that based on what it thinks you want. So, you know, if you have certain political preferences or if you preference certain sources, it will start to give you more of that information. It also runs algorithms to kind of start to work out the way that you should be presented with information. So you'll, you'll, if you're working with lots of people who work with AI, you'll see that different um, people working with the same AI will get responses from that AI that's quite different. And it almost feels like different personalities um, because it's responding to what you're putting into it to a large extent. So it'll start to replicate your language a lot more. Um, you know, like it will, it will start to talk to you using some of the same vernacular that you use and things like that. So 
It's really important when you're going through these processes, and I don't think enough people do this, that they actually work into account. You've saved time. You are saving time using these sorts of programs. So there's absolutely no doubt in my mind, I'm very quick at developing practical assessments, um, but the time that this has allowed me to save how much more detail I can build in in like a similar sort of time frame. So I can create a lot more additional supporting documents. Um, I can flesh out characters. I can, you know, I've increased the quality of my role plays. Um, I can provide additional exemplar scripts. I can, you know, all of the that sort of supporting stuff, you can create a lot more quickly, right? Um, the creation of benchmarks and things like that based on documents and all that sort of stuff. All of that is a lot easier to do. You save a huge amount of time by using services like Claude, ChatGPT, and things like that. Um, I still think I think Claude is still probably the best. Um, Grok is funny. Um, uh, ChatGPT is is pretty is is very useful. Um, whatever the Google one currently is, it used to be called Bard. I know it's called something else now. Um, is probably the least reliable of all the ones that I've worked with. Um, but they are all designed by people and they are all designed to give the user the best experience. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to give you the most accurate experience. Um, so we are certainly seeing that a huge, that more time is needed and that we are starting to see it definitely try to please people more. Um, so my suggestion is, is that, you know, make sure, yes, use it. You will be saving time. However, you absolutely need to build processes where you are reading all of that information, where you have prompts built into it to, so that you can identify where that information is coming from so that you could reference it, go into the articles. Like often GPT will come up with a source and it'll say, oh, here's the article that it was from. You need to then go copy and paste that article into, into Google, go and make sure that that article even exists. Like it will create fake um, research papers. It will create fake articles. Um, and it will, if, when you call it out, it will just flat out. It, sometimes, Actually, it varies. Sometimes it will go, oh, yes, you're right. That's not correct. Um, other times it will literally be like, yes, it is. And it will it will argue with you. So, you know, again, it just really does depend on like how, how you interact with it and the types of prompts that you set up. Um, but it's incredibly important to understand that it is literally just a tool, guys. It is just a tool. It's a tool that's going to make your life easier. If you are a trainer and assessor and you're not using it, I think you're being silly. If you're a curriculum developer and you're not using it, I think you're being ridiculous. Um, and even if you're, I mean, you know, and all of our students are using it, like all the students are using it. There's just literally no way around it. Um, so the better you guys are, the more familiar you are with it. Um, the more you'll be able to kind of see how you'll be able to keep up with what it's doing. So for example, a couple of months ago, it started loving the use of emojis. And so it includes the use of emojis in all of its freaking communications. It still loves speaking very much in dot point. Um, it still loves organizing information by like one, two, three, four. Um, so you, you start to become quite familiar with, you know, when you're seeing it. And I mean, certainly I see it all the time. Clients use it in emails um, all the time. I have absolutely no issues with people that use it in all of those sorts of ways. I think it makes sense. Quite often I'll write up an email to a client. I'll chuck it. I'll copy and paste the whole thing into chat GPT. And I'll be like, how do I say this more professionally? Um, you know, like it's a fantastic tool for use, but you have to understand where the information is coming from. And if you're relying on it to provide you with something, you need to be asking it what the source of that information is. And if you're not doing that, you are going to get caught out. You are going to end up training people on information that is just not correct. So I hope you guys found this helpful. Ultimately, at the end of the day, yes, your GPT is lying to you. You just need to do a couple of things to make sure that you can catch it out. I hope you found this helpful, guys. My name is Lauren for NOI Education Services.